Hi guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Know. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and this week on the podcast, we have Scott Evans, who is one of the co-hosts of Access on NBC. Scott recently signed an overall deal with NBCU, so he's also working on a ton of different shows and projects for that overall umbrella that, that, that are soon to come. Um, Scott is just a total pro. You know, he he used to host World of Dance, he hosts Access, he hosts a radio show. He he's done it, he's worn many different hats throughout his career, and I just admire him so much. He has amazing energy and he he brings his full self to everything that he does. And I think that's just really admirable. And um, I love getting some time with him to chat about his career. Um, he shares some really amazing moments kind of sprinkled throughout um, during his time at Access. One of them specifically that I, I really wanted to call out was this amazing conversation he had with Chloe and Hallie that has really informed the way that he has approached not only his his kind of his career, but also himself over the past several years. And it's, it's he got a little emotional recalling it, but I think it's it was a really great part of this interview. Um, and he ended with some really great stories and advice about you know interviewing people, but also just careers in general. And there's something that everyone can take from either listening or watching this interview. So anyway, keep listening for my interview with Scott Evans. Watch Access Hollywood on NBC every weeknight. And please rate, review, and subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so we're here with Scott Evans, host of Access, all things Access, daytime, nighttime, all everything. If you if you've watched Access, you've seen Scott. He used to host World of Dance and and a bunch of other things that you've seen. He does it all. He he's really kind of the best of the best in this space, and I'm so excited to have him here. Scott, welcome. What up, brother? How you doing? I'm good. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Listen, I don't know about the best of the best, but I definitely am having the most fun. That's for sure. Is this is this the most fun that you've that you've had in your career? Like right right now, do you feel like this moment for you is is a really great one for you? Yeah, I do feel like this moment right now is a really great one. I think it's I try not to look at it in the way that's like what is the best moment of my sure. career, but I do I do feel like I am my most honest. I feel like I am living the truest expression of the dream that I had, you know, all those years ago with uh, pursuing this is a, as a career. Um, I do feel like there are things that happen on a regular basis though, that clue me into the, just how wild and crazy um, things are still going to get, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm having, I'm having a really, really good time. Yeah. What's an example? What's an example of one of those things that, like, that kind of still is like, okay, this, it's still gonna be crazy. It's still gonna. Okay, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you this. I can't tell you exactly what it is because it would give some things that are okay. kind of in the works away. Of course. But I'll tell you this: there, I am. It was my first pitch for under this umbrella, right? Um, and um, in the pitch, the show was bought <laughs> even saying that out loud is crazy that's amazing but like in the in the pitch it was like yes we want to do this we want to do this with you and we are so excited about it and so um it just let me know understanding that that is not at all a typical experience for anybody in this business um pitching anything anywhere but for me it was the kind of response i think i needed to feel like there like i had some 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 business being in this position right like you you know if you're like me there are, there are times where you you suffer from imposter syndrome and things like that like yeah. there's no there's no reason why i'm in this position but but well, you, no, you, some, but you do point. deal with that you do deal with that of like i'm in this dream position and there's always yeah. more to go yeah. but also this is it's like, do I, do, you do deserve to be there, but it goes through your mind of like, how did I get here? Or like, did I, and like, did yeah, I... like there, certainly there's someone else who deserves it more. You know what I mean? Um, I, I have just kind of relied on, especially uh, um, in like reality. I'm, I am never going to be the, the most handsome, the most fit, the most experienced or the funniest. 
But what I am going to be is the one willing to work the most. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to be outworked, right? Like, I'm not, it's like kind of like the J-Lo effect, you know what I mean? And not totally. to take anything away from her accolades or from what she does well or her appearance or any of those things. Um, but what she will even tell you is that you're not going to outwork me, mm-hmm. you know? And to be able to see that up close, so to watch her and watch that, to witness that is true. And so, yeah, I I think I just, this is a, it's a really cool point in my career and in my life. And I feel like things are in alignment in a lot of ways. And in in such an alignment, I couldn't have imagined, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, Totally. So, but, you know, I want to get to the, to the overall deal that you have and all that, but I also want to first kind of go back because I, I was reading up on you and I'm, am, am I wrong in saying that you started sort of doing something more like sports broadcasting kind of stuff yeah. at first, that was kind of your first thing that you were doing was, was jumping to entertainment always the end goal, the dream of it all, or was it just, you knew you wanted to be in front of a camera and, and the yeah, subject matter kind of just kind of didn't really matter. I didn't really care. It didn't really matter to me what the subject matter was, mm-hmm. whether it was sports entertainment, I've done sports entertainment, I've done hard news. Um, I've done all commentary where it's really no news and you're just right. talking about stuff you you think about um, uh, or considerations that you've made, that kind of thing. So yeah, I never really was married to what path would get me to the camera or what path would get me to the opportunity. What I was more concerned about was that I have an opportunity to be as authentically me as possible. Mm-hmm. And that has evolved and changed and I failed in that miserably and I feel like I have also succeeded in that um, pretty well in different areas of my life and at different times but yeah working in sports was like a a a natural thing because I was living in Indianapolis growing up in Indianapolis um, attending Purdue University Big Ten school now big news coming for Big Ten right Mm -hmm. Uh, here in Southern California I went I I went to Michigan so I know that you did yeah you get it you get it (laughs) I won't hold it against you. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I only say that because I know that's what people say. I really, totally, exactly. I, same, I, yeah, same, I love that you, <laughs> I love that you went there and I love that you had this connection to your um, post-secondary education experience in a way that it, you know, in, in energizes you. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, I went, I went to, I went to Purdue and there I was like, there's, there's a way to work in one of the big, industries of our town and not count myself out right um there really was not an entertainment news hub in in indianapolis but we did have the indiana pacers we did have the indiana fever which is the the WNBA team we had the colts the indy 500 um incredible golf we had um the indians which is a, a feeder program for um I don't even know if they're still named the Indians actually, but it was a feeder program for the MLB. And so we had all of this sport life Mm -hmm. and it was like, well then let's do that. And so when the Pacers, when, when, when my sister Stacy had learned of the opening for the, the on-court position, I ran, I was living in LA at the time. Wow. I ran. You came back. I ran. Love it. Like I flew back and was like, I don't know if we can make this work but at the time was the youngest to ever hold the position. Um, the first black person, a uh, black male to hold the position with the Indiana Pacers. And so to have that kind of stamp of approval from the league was also a really cool thing. And then did so well with that. They were like, would you want to do the, the WBA games as well? And I was like, absolutely. And then was able to, to, to kind of parlay. It snowballs, that. right. Yeah. yeah there other opportunities. So it was like, I'm always looking for what's the end. Totally. Yeah. And that's cool that you were open to whatever the the subject was, but it was, there's a plethora of opportunity here. So let's, yeah. whatever, whatever, whichever one I can take, it's just, let me take it. And it's like, it's all going to be learning. Right. A hundred percent. It's all going to be for my benefit and for the mm-hmm. benefit of whatever team I'm a part of. So I'm, I'm also prepared to just do my best. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, sports, can be particularly daunting because there's just so much information to know and to be able to re- rely on and call back to in a moment. But it's, it's like anything else. If it matters to you, you, you get into it. A hundred percent. And I, I don't think that, I mean, it's obviously pop culture and entertainment and celebrity news is different, but like 
interviews are better and 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 segments are probably better when it's something that you really know about that you have a deep not that you have a natural deep knowledge or interest in like I, I found that with myself my when I do interviews if I know about the person or if I've watched that person or whatever it's going to be a better chat it is it just is it just you know? is it just is and I think that if you can if your approach can be if your approach can also be or include this genuine curiosity right? This genuine desire to make a connection, then of course, right? And so my thing was always the people. My thing was always the story. It was never, I'm only one to do sports. Yeah. You know, or only want to do entertainment. And I remember when, even when I was um, anchoring the Channel One News broadcast in New York, Maria, Maria Manunos, uh, Lisa Ling, Anderson Cooper, oh, yeah. were, you know, um, famous uh, previous anchors of the newscast. I was like, okay we can do that <laughs> and again but but again there were there were moments when i got after i remember when i got that i remember going to get the job flying out to new york uh i tested for the show and i just committed to the test i was like oh i can do this i'm gonna blow this out of the water and then on the way home got the offer like did not anticipate it happening that quickly on the way home got the offer and then it was like reality set in and it was like you're about to go work in hard news. It's different. In New York? Yeah. Are you really ready for that? <laughs> That'd be daunting to pretty much anybody. Yeah, I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. But you but you did and you could. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. You, and, and found a way to win at it at the same yes. time. Yeah. 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 And that, and that that's cool thinking about the people that were in that position before you and the different they all took very different paths from one another. You know, and then that's that's encouraging because it's like, all right, I'll find my own path from there. Exactly. There we go. I mean, exactly so, that. Yeah. And so eventually you're, you, you find yourself at access, which is what, what was that? Like seven years ago, I think if I, like 2015 yeah, ish. Years ago. Yes. Okay. And what was the first, like, what was your first big assignment at access that you were that, that sort of. It's stupid. You're not going to believe me. It's dumb. Okay. You're not gonna believe me. So I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost like scared to hear this. What is it? So I wasn't even actually an Access Hollywood employee yet. Okay. And I, but I had met with Rob and the team. Uh, Rob Silverstein was a former uh, EP of, mm -hmm. of Access Hollywood. I met with a team, and Robin Raiden in particular was the the news director. And um, I get a phone call on a Tuesday. Okay. From a Los Angeles number, and I pick up the phone, and I was like, "Hello." I'm at the news desk for channel one. I'm like, hello. And I hear this voice. Ah, we got a, we got a exclusive Taylor Swift on Thursday. Can you do it? Please don't. And I'm like, hello. Next question. <laughs> huh? Who is this? Who is it? It's Rob. That's how he talked. He like, he, everything was like a bark. He like barked sure. everything at you. Uh, love the man. But like everything he said was like, a, rah, 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 rah. And, and, and you're so, saying that endearingly. It's a, it's endearingly. Oh, you, it's, you, it's right, absolutely exactly. a form of, form of, of, of love. Um, and he knows it. But so then Robin Raiden jumps on the call and she's like, okay, so here's the deal. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Next is Hollywood calling. We've got a, a, a Taylor Swift exclusive on Thursday. Wanting to know if you're available to do it. And I was like, do what for it? Like, you want me to come watch? They're like, no, Shadow. we want you to conduct the interview. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm free. I don't know. Meanwhile, about meanwhile you're like, what the? <laughs> yeah. Also, I don't know what time it is. I don't know right. where it is. I just like, I, yes. The answer is yes. I walked directly into to my uh, Angela Hunter, who was the EP of Channel One News, and I said, I think I have a really cool opportunity that's going to call me from work on Thursday. Do you mind if I'm sick? And she was like, How sick? And I said, Taylor Swift sick. <laughs> 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 Taylor Swift sick. sick. She was like. All right, well, I'll see you when you finish. And so prepared for the interview. We were supposed mm -hmm. to be talking for seven minutes, um, mostly about she was doing like a kids sales integration. Right, I remember that. Um, yeah. And uh, she was talking for seven minutes. We talked for 22 minutes. And, 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 and if people, people listening don't know, like in, in scenarios like this, like that's, you might, well getting, real. you might as well be getting like six hours. Exactly, yeah. Unreal. We talked about so much too. So at the end of the, the conversation, they finally do uh, um, cut us because they realize, oh, he's just going to keep going. Like he doesn't. Right. right. Uh, 
they, she grabs my hand, Taylor grabs my hand and says, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Did you get what you needed? I just, I forgot that we were even interviewed, like we were even interviewing, like we was just, we were just talking, it was so nice. And I was like, are we still rolling? Oh, please tell me that we're still rolling. We're capturing this, right? Yeah, like this, this is the moment. <laughs> this is the moment. Do you um, have that footage somewhere? I think that we do actually Good. have that footage. Um, but I, have, I also have the voicemail that Tree, her publicist, the publicist. and Taylor left for Nancy Harrison, who was the, the producer uh, for the segment. The beautiful, sweet, and kind um, uh, voicemail that they left after our interview saying, we don't know where he came from, but anytime y'all want to have an interview with us, we would want to do it with Scott. Like he's wow. our guy. And I did become the Taylor Swift guy here. Good for you. Uh, I love that. It. But it was the thing that got me the gig. You know what I mean? It was like this, she, I mean, one of the most famous people on the planet. And that was her response. And do you think that I mean, and and again, you have this, you have the skill set to do that with anybody, but I feel like, do you think that partially part of the reason why you excelled so heavily in that moment was because like, it was kind of like holding your feet to the fire, right? It was, they were, you were almost, you were being tested a little bit, right? Like it was like, let's see if you can do this. You can say exactly. it. I was being hazed. There we go. Like, but do you <laughs> think that part of that being in that pressure of that, like, you you know, you have two or three days notice of interviewing one of the biggest people in the world, like. Yeah. Did that fuel did that fuel you in that moment to be like, all right, I have to take this chance? I think what it did was it forced me to consider going all out. Like yeah. it, it forced me to be one super prepared. It forced me to be um uh willing to fail because like this isn't a small interview that no one's gonna see, right? Like it, you just gotta. You got and you got to be able to roll with it. And so I was able to rely on a lot of the like improv stuff that we were doing with the Pacers and the the, the things I was sure. doing with studying theater in, in in college, and you know was really able to lean into the live aspect of previous work experience and just go with the flow as opposed to I only can do say what's on these cards. It all has been approved, and any and and we just had a real conversation. It's all amazing. And, it's amazing. What I'll say it did more than anything was it informed how I wanted to move in my career, the, the, the kind of vibe that I wanted in every conversation that was filmed for the show. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted it to feel like you were just talking, that someone wasn't having this super produced um, interaction with you, but that you were talking to someone who actually cared about what we were talking about. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it's really been the, the way, the style that I've approached you know, in all of my on camera and off camera, frankly, um, interviews, the thing that I think is the coolest thing to me about this job and about where I am in my life, aside from being in a place now with this NBC overall and talent deal to tell more stories and to invite more people along to be able to tell these stories is when the, one of the best things to me is that when people stop me on the street or wherever and they say, oh my God, you are just like you are on TV uh-huh it's the best yeah because it means that i've been able to finally bring my personality and my profession into alignment together with each other you know what i mean yeah so and, and you aren't you aren't doing a persona you aren't doing a what like this is this is you regardless of the venue regardless of the whatever and you aren't on and off it's just you're you're yourself exactly there is no off switch there's no on switch it's just like either you're tired or you're not <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> but then right. you're going to give you the same level of um energy regardless because you love what you do mm -hmm. you know and i do mm -hmm. i love what i do i've dreamed of doing this since the third grade and to be in a position to do it on the scale that i get to do it on like come on it's a, it's a literal dream come true so yeah. i we you mentioned the overall deal that you have with NBCU and I would just love to know sort of like what like what is your approach to like what does that mean really like it like just for for the average person like what does that mean because you you'll be you know telling stories and, and producing things and whatever but like how are you approaching that what what do you hope comes out of it for yourself um because it's 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 a when when you hear like you know like a like the over and overall deal it's like I feel like that can depending on who it's for, it can mean anything. 
Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the the really beautiful thing was reading some of the write ups about it, like when it when, when it was yeah. announced with NBC, reading some of the announcements about it, and some of the other names, some of the other people who have had similar deals with NBC um, to be associated in those groups with these what I think are really um, cool creators, really great people. Kelly Clarkson, Megan Trainer. I mean, it's a it's a Jennifer it's a, Lopez. I mean, it's a I'm small not and mighty mad. list, right? Exactly. I'm not mad to be. I had I had to drop some of those names in for you. You know, we had to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm not mad to be counted among those few and to be entrusted also with bringing to market these stories and these and and working with these storytellers who have something to say, who believe and I believe haven't been said like this ever before is a really cool thing. So the way that the deal is structured, the way the deal works is there is this kind of first look overall deal, which means any project that I that that we're we're developing that I'm working on, NBC wants a first look at it. They're like, bring it to us because we believe in you and we want to bring help bring your stories to market. We want to help you do what you're doing now. And then this talent deal broadens my scope from Access Hollywood specifically or singularly to be used um, uh, uh, and added to any uh, Comcast, Universal, mm -hmm. um, NBC property with real intention right um and with the the the, the idea there is to be able to plug and play you know right what I mean? like oh he's great with this people with these people let's put him up there he's jump into this. a game show or jump into the this red carpet moment or or what have you right yeah right. that's all, that's able, amazing that's really yeah exciting. to be free to do more not bound by well what do the agents say or what did this say or what's the availability that there is this kind of synergy working behind the scenes to ensure that it all goes smoothly mm -hmm. um but to, but to be honest with you the the coolest part to me and i said it already but the coolest part to me is to have been entrusted as like an industry insider to help bring cool necessary uh, and in many ways even groundbreaking content um to viewers everywhere whether it be mm -hmm. on peacock whether it be on broadcast um and to do things that have never been done before america's big deal was a live shoppable competition series you've never seen anything like, like that mm -hmm. before right you've seen components of it of course but it's not not all together like that no 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 and definitely ain't lie <laughs> Here's when I tell you we would be in the last 45 seconds and I'd be like, will you tell me who's, what deal are you going to take? And they'd be like, well, when I woke up this morning, Scott, I thought to myself, I was like, that is not Cut a to thing. the chase. <laughs> <laughs> you have to speed this thing up. We do not have time for that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's a dream. That's man. It's so, so fun. Cool. Yeah, that's so fun. And it, and it really is. It's boundless. And it's, and it's, it's, it sounds like there's no bad idea within the, within within that you know and like they'll 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 well no I'll, I'll be honest i thought that or, or they'll, they'll listen or they'll at least they'll you'll have it you'll have somebody's ear at least you know what i mean to True. for anything but i but the, the my approach is like i'm when my approach is to bring things that are ready to go okay like I don't, i'm not i you know with with the the way that the deal is structured it also allows me to develop ideas and right. shows to a point where when we're pitching we have it's kind of set. It's okay. it's ready to go. Whether we mm -hmm. change things or not, no problem. But it's ready to go. Very rarely, um, or I should say, I, it is never my intention to be like, hey, so I got an idea for a show. It goes something kind of like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? We've got a development You team have to now. show that it could, yeah, right, totally. Okay. Yeah, we've got a production got company, a, a development team that's that are working on these projects alongside me and helping to ensure that there are more storytellers who are brought up, up to be a part right. of the process, to be a part of this experience so that it's not just my overall deal. It's not mm -hmm. just my first look deal. There's people uh, coming right actually, to you. Yeah, it's actually access for so many people who have been uh, uh, working toward this thing for a long time. So, so Scott, you've been at Access for seven, about seven years now, yeah. and I'm, I'm wondering. I mean, a lot has changed in, in the celebrity news, pop culture news. Uh, 
is entertainment space just in general information in that that time yeah yeah in the broader space for sure in that time how has that affected your role how has that affected how you approach your your job um because it changed a lot has changed and some some of it's been gradual and some of it was kind of overnight so I'm curious how that how that's affected you yeah so it what it what it did was it encouraged me to, to what because the thing that you you learn in all of this is if you're not being real if you're not being true it ain't working right yeah. people see through that facade excuse me people see through that facade way faster now than they ever have before and so what it really did was help me hone in on who do I want to become who do I want to be who am I what am I doing here and why am I doing it it helped me refine the purpose of all of this for myself because that would help me that would then help inform my approach right and so when I got clear on that a whole lot of stuff for me personally started changing um uh you know even even as recently as locking my hair you know in COVID deciding to as a black man and inter- a, a, a flagship entertainment mm-hmm. news program in prime time to decide to uh uh allow my hair to grow in a way um that it does out of my head in a dreadlock was a major major choice and it was something I was really very nervous about mm-hmm. and had wanted to do it for years and just never believed that was going to be while I was on air a a thing I'd be able to do and I was having a conversation with Chloe and Hallie and wow I did not expect to get emotional about that but um having a conversation with them and they were like what are you waiting on Mm is if it's if it's sure if it's you pretending something yeah we can understand anyone would understand your the discomfort or the 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 caution but if it's really, you feel like this is a part of like who you are truly and what you want, want to experience truly, you got to do it. What's stopping you? Seriously, it's, it's you're leaning into your Black identity and, and, and wearing, that, wearing that for people to see and celebrating it. And that's, yeah. that's just amazing that, that you felt empowered to do that and, and nothing was holding you back at that point. And well, I'll be honest, there, there was also this, there was also this shift in um awareness right so I, of I, course I'd been growing my hair for a while but didn't lock it until uh 2020 and it was around the time of Ahmaud Aubrey um and that video of his murder mm-hmm. um that I just felt like I would be do granted I have dark black brown skin like it's you're not ever gonna see me and be like is that the black dude on tv <laughs> like you're never not gonna know right but I, I just felt like I wanted another way to express, like you said, my this 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 black identity, but also to give other people who might have thought might have counted themselves out of an experience or thought they did not belong because of their hair in some sort of way. I wanted to give them a person they could point to, a person yeah. they could count, be counted. You know what I mean? In that in that sense, and. Yeah, like the response was very mixed. I'm sure I, I'm sure it was, but but ultimately the the positive reception that you got from it from from people that see themselves or want to just celebrate you for celebrating this, like yeah. that that has to outweigh any negative. It was so funny. I was at the the get at, at loctician is what the person who's mm-hmm. well, in many cases is the person who like may helps maintain you know the, sure. the juiciness of like the gorgeousness situation. of that right exactly. you know what I mean? it oh ain't it God. ain't me i can tell you that <laughs> but it is not me um but when i got to the appointment she was like you are not gonna believe this because at first i was reading her comments of people who were really hateful and mean and nasty um on social media some of which were uh black many of which were white but all of which were people I didn't know. Of course, and they don't matter. Um, I, had a, I had a realization about that too, and I, I, I wanna share it with you briefly, but just because it, at first I was like, how do you feel so strongly about somebody's hair you've never met? How do you feel so strongly about a person's hair who you do not know and feel so comfortable saying some pretty wild stuff to mm-hmm. me? And someone pointed out to me, well, you may not know them, but they know you. 
that's a valid that's a valid that's a valid that's a valid clarification i mean that's a valid yeah absolutely i was like damn and mm -hmm. so that helped me like immediately reframe some things right <laughs> But then, so we had had that conversation and she's been pre privy to all of this commentary. Then she shows me these chats and these messages that she's getting from people being like, I want this. And it's pictures of me. Like they want their hair styled like I have my hair styled. And, or, and, 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 and that has to feel more substantive and, and fulfilling and it's like okay i'm glad you, you have to be glad you did that you know what i mean it, just, and yeah, it was yeah it was pretty cool that's it was really cool. cool it was pretty cool yeah and 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 you know the fact that you know the impetus for this was just an interview that you were doing and 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 a com kind of a probably like kind of offshoot like one minute before we start rolling kind of com kind of conversation uh -huh. the fact that that was what pushed you to do this and then it ended up having such a pro profound bless you had such a profound impact on how you move you're moving forward and in, in not just your career but your life and how you were looking at certain things like I think that that it speaks to some of the connections that you can make just in these little in, in these sit downs with really really people that are so widely known and so widely celebrated yeah. but like there's wisdom to be gained in some of those really small interactions and 100%. that's just special to me I think that's really special to hear yeah, man, it was really cool. Like, I, we're 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 in an interview with with Queen Latifah, and she is someone who has become um, I've become very friendly with. It took my mom to girls trip on a girls trip for the the junket. In Incredible! New my mom literally rapped lyrics of <laughs> Queen Latifah's first album back to Queen Latifah, and they went on like a rap off in the the junket. It was heaven, unreal. heaven. <laughs> but the, one of the first things she said to me was like, "I love." the fact that you chose to wear your hair this way. Mm -hmm. I love the style, of course, but I love the choice that you've made. And then I just saw Chloe, was it two days ago on Monday? So I walk onto the set and she's rehearsing, or no, I'm sorry, not rehearsing, she's shooting a scene for the, the uh, uh, commercial. They yell cut, she looks over, she sees me and she's like, oh, and she runs and she puts her hands through yes. my hair. Now, anyone who has locks or natural hair, any black person with some hair will tell you, you'll just be running your hands. Of course, of hair. course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was such an. But it was Chloe. You hear me? And it was also such an instant love on kind of scenario. I just, it was really, it was really cool. Uh, I love that. That's just. Yeah. I, I love that whole thread. Um, so I, I, one, one other thing I'm wondering, Scott, I mean, like you've done a ton of different projects over the years. You were yeah. you were a world of dance. You've done other things that haven't necessarily panned out in the long in the long term. And I think that that's part of being a host. That's part of being somebody who who can do a bunch of different projects and things like that. You can wear many yeah. hats. But some of those things don't work out. Some of those, and I, the word fail, I don't think that's the right term to use for some of these things. But like, how do you, how do you frame something like that? When, when you're, when you're hosting something on a project that runs for a season or two, or maybe doesn't get the life that you want it to get, and you still believed in it or what have you, how do you frame that in your mind going forward? Do you take a lesson from it? Do you I'm just curious what, how you kind of react to that for yourself so that you don't get too down on it. I think one, I think it's okay to get down on it. I mean, okay. I think it's okay to have an expectation or a want or a desire and it doesn't work out for you to feel some sort of way about that. I don't think that you, I think that it is okay to feel however you feel about it. I think you also mm -hmm. just got to move on. Right. Also, um, you know what I mean? Keep it moving you know, is the, is the phrase that I come back to often. But I'll be honest with you, after America's Big Deal didn't come back for a second season immediately, I was bummed. Mm -hmm. like I was like, damn, I thought that was going to be, I thought we were going to get more opportunities to develop this, to hone this in and take it to another level. Um, so I was really very sad when that didn't, when that didn't mm -hmm. go. Um, but what World of Dance taught me I don't know if you know the story about how I got World of Dance. But I don't like, think I, I do. I've been cutting for that job since we, when, when, since its first announcement, since got its it. first internal announcement before it was even made public. I wanted the job of host, right? So um, 
when after the first season or when it was announced that Jenna Dewan would be doing it, Jenna Dewan Taylor would be doing it, whom I love and respect in this, in this industry and in this business, what she does is not easy. Um, when I saw that she got the job, I was like, well, she was in the position. Can't right. be mad. She was in the position. And that means you got to work harder. And what it let, what I also did was I didn't at that point say, well, I'll never be able to host a, a world of dance. I'll never be able to do it. I just That's was like, now. this season is not the season. Right. And so when I got the call halfway through them filming the third season, I laughed. Like I laughed mostly because of the way that it had happened, the way that it had gone down. I was at a, the, the Billboard Music Awards wearing a Pepto-Bismol uh, <laughs> a pink velvet suit and acting in dies. total ass in the front row with a friend of mine, Stevie Mackey, who is also Jennifer Lopez's friend and vocal coach, um, while Ella, Ma- Ella May. Ella May, Ella May yep. Ella May. I think it's Ella while May. Ella May was on stage, who's also a client of Stevie Mackey's. She's on stage singing the song that I, it was my song of the summer. So Stevie and I are singing Buddha. harmonies to her, Buddha, there we singing go. harmonies to her on the stage. She looks over at us from the billboard stage and is like, y'all do it too much. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's literally like, <laughs> y'all done? That y'all about you done? Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> like doing way too much. But what I didn't know was that Benny Medina and Elaine Goldsmith Thomas were st- sitting behind Stevie. When I so we hug and I leave. What I didn't know, I found out much much later, is that at that point, Benny looks at Elaine and says, "Why haven't we brought in Scott?" Two, three days later, they brought me in. Amazing. And I'll never forget just telling them what I wanted to do on the show, telling them why I wanted to do it on the show and sharing with them my energy about the show, period. Bibby said, I feel like this is a little, a sense of, uh, one of those senses of like meant to be. And Elaine was like, I was gonna say it. And then she, and they, uh, I don't know the Yiddish word. I can't remember, ber- bershet, bershat, bershet. Mm-hmm. It's like a meant to be. Okay. Right? Uh, I ask the question that I ask in every scenario where there's a, a either a sale or a closing that needs to happen. It, the question is, is there anything that I have presented to you or that we've discussed here today that would prevent you from making this choice? Close the deal. When one of the many jobs I've had before in sales, close the deal. And then he said to me, no, I think we're good. There are a lot of people who would have stayed and said, well, you know, I want to thank you one more time for, you know, this would mean the world to me and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, well, I look forward to hearing from you. And I left. And then he said to me, no one have I ever experienced, no time have I ever experienced someone just saying, I've done enough. I'm trusting that I've done enough and I'm out. He said that you've done enough and it's, that's great. But what that's, else do I really need to great do? Advice, totally. I'm out. Um, and so when even that didn't go past uh, another season, additional season, I was a little bummed. But then I, I what I remembered is that like you're, it's all building, mm-hmm. and I'm in this for the long haul. You know what I mean? So no, it's not AGT in the 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 several years, you know, generations of of television, but. It also is work that I'm really proud of. Yeah, you should be. I'm, you know what I mean? Work that I'm, I am, that in, in a lot of ways is still groundbreaking and still changing the way the TV is, is thought about. Um, and in every way, I didn't even realize until necessarily until now, is all about also helping make someone's dream a reality. And so to be a part of that, there is, for any span of time, is a re- is a rewarding experience, and so that's Absolutely. what I focus on. You know, Absolutely. and and you still you you always are somebody who hosts a world of dance, and that's something that's got that's <laughs> that that title follows you, and that gives more credence to your name and and to your resume, and that's just like you said, it's a building block. And, and so, so, the next AGT might come around, and they'll be like, oh, who's hosted major <laughs> things? And it's you know what I mean, like that's it. Exactly. That's, just put your name out there, and it, that's amazing. 
It's also funny at Thanksgiving because that's now what my family calls me. Uh, call here you? come World of Dance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why don't y'all switch it to America's Big Deal? Can we get America's Big Deal? That has a better ring to it. Uh, here comes America's Big Deal. No, that, that, they're, like, they're like, nah, you're World of Dance. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. Um, I just wanted to end on a couple quick things that just kind of pull back the curtain on on a little bit on, on, on your job or interviewing celebrities and what it's like in, in your yeah. position for anybody listening who might be interested in that. Um, how do you balance sort of being celebrity friendly and 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 kind of PR friendly or, or kind of getting what that the, the celebrity or brand side might want out of an interview versus also, you know, getting a good soundbite or getting a, something that might make a good headline out of, out of an interview? How do you approach that balance? So I'm never looking for the headline. And I'm mm-hmm. never looking for the soundbite. I'm looking for a genuine connection right. or vibe that will allow a person to be comfortable enough to be themselves. So, you know, the the at Access Hollywood, our team is also always like, Scott, you make the moments. It's like, you're a moment maker, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and while that is a cool thing for that to be an interpretation of what I do or what I'm seeking to do, the, the reality is that like, I, I it's the story. It's like the yeah. why we're here. Um, and it's not always easy to, to, excuse me, it's not always easy to have like uncomfortable conversations with people who are in, in a lot of cases, strangers. Um, so at that point, I, I just really rely on an authentic curiosity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A genuine um, curiosity and the fact that I'm not ever trying to put someone in, the, in a position to say say the wrong thing, right? right? Or like I'm not if that's if that's what you're looking for in an interview or an interviewer, I'm not your guy. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just I'm just not. You're, you're not you're not the gotcha guy. You're not the gotcha. I guy don't have right any now. interest in that. No. In what that karmically feels like, what that feels like in your body afterward, right? Like I don't I'm not interested in that high. I'm not interested nope. in that high. So <laughs> yeah, my approach my approach is something different, and so. Sometimes we do get the bite that the show was hoping for. Um, you know, I usually don't have any problem bringing up news, like dealing with news. Um, but also, that's one of the reasons why I think I have some of the relationships that I have with some of these individuals because they know when they sit down in an interview with me, I'm not gonna about. I'm not about to. It's not about to be a yucky feeling interaction. Right. Totally. What do you do when you haven't been able to see the film or watch the full show or read the full book? that somebody's promoting or talking about what do you have people that tell you that 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 give you oh, there are a ton that. of notes there's always right. a ton of notes totally but what, what, how do you always go into pre- how do you prepared. kind of present that with with sort of in an interview i'll tell you this what i don't do anymore is if i haven't seen the movie and you're asked by movie talent or show talent what do you think do not lie right. i used to 100%. lie I, I lie i've lied a couple times and then they start asking you things about the movie or the show, and you're like, oh, I don't know if I got that far. No, no. <laughs> you can see the dad died, the dad died in the first episode. Like, oh. Huh. <laughs> as, so as a rule, if I have not yeah, seen don't it, don't lie, about, lie it. about seeing it. Um, what I what I usually will will do is rely on the audience response, you know. So like for, so for example, ask me if I've seen them. Have you seen She Hulk, the, the new show? On Disney Plus? Yeah. No, you I, you know what I'm gonna tell you? People love the Marvel universe. And so I can imagine this is gonna be one of those that people are gonna lose it for. And think about this. It's the first time the cousin of the Hulk has had her own thing and she's an attorney in law. She's gonna kill it. There we go. Pro. Um l- l- there we go. L- last question kind of in this nature. What do you what do you do when you aren't getting the energy from somebody that you would have hoped for or or the, or they're tired or they're whatever? What how do you well, how do you make up for that or how do you how do you read that? That's a good question. That's a good question. So I try to do research like for people I've never interviewed before, especially if they're big names, like big celebrities. Um, I try to see what their vibe is in an mm-hmm. in interview, but I have the kind of energy that interrupts your typical day, right? Like I try to come, like when we're in a junket interview, you're doing 42 interviews in a day. You don't really care about me. 
Right, you just right. want someone to feed you some energy, like someone to be a blast of a good feeling, right? And so I would that that is first. But even then, I've had several instances where that is not enough. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, there there have been some some instances where you will just fight that through the whole interview. But again, in getting to be as authentic as you can be and as honest and as true in yourself and in your own skin as you can be, being able to say, "You good? Are you tired?" Do we need to get a, let's, you know, we should do, let's do a shot of Coke Zero right now. You want to do a shot? Should we get a shot? There we go. It's so funny how people will take that cue, mm-hmm. like, oh, am I, was I low energy? My bad. I didn't know. It's, it's, it's a call out without it being like a call out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah totally. it's an acknowledgement of like, hey, yeah. I'm working over here. <laughs> I'm not judging it. Right. Exactly. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> I'll it. never forget Sharon Stone. Uh, was in we were doing an interview together and it was in the zoom situation pretty early on in covid lockdown and she was in the backyard and she was like oh i just they can't get the light right we can't get this it's just it's just i just uh, scott i am just i said but you know what for for the next 15 minutes it's just me and you Hmm. so whatever we gotta do right now to lock back into this let's do that so we can talk about that stuff in a minute but you know what i want to talk about and she was like, what's that? She, scut- she scooted up to the camera. She's like this. She's like, what? And it ended up being this really fun. That's fine. Yeah, that's cute. cute. moment with Absolutely. an icon. Um, and it opened her up in a way that she told me stories that she's never, she said she's never told before. Mm, so that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's It's, that's it's, it's about just, it, you just arm them a little bit, you know? And yeah. It's about just c- c- coming, how, you, how can you call someone else forward if you're unwilling to take a step forward? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, well, Scott, I think we're out of time, but I, I could talk to you for, for five hours. You're, you're, you're a total pro. And, you um, as well, brother. You as well. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything you want to plug before we sign off? I know you have a lot going on. So is there anything that, that you want people to check out But before Listen, they... I'll tell you this. You, you know, Amazon has started this really cool project uh, online called AMP, and it's given me the opportunity to, to, to live a whole other dream of being on the radio and DJing my own radio show. Uh, so definitely, if you're, if you're interested in that, download the app. It's called AMP. And uh, we are live every weekday from nine until 10. And so it is a blast of the best kind of energy. It's the same kind of vibe that we have uh, right now, but it is is great music, it's great conversation, and you can be a part of it. So you call into the show, you can listen, but you can also contribute, you can also participate. And so- So fun. We're having a blast, man. And we have some really cool things, I think, coming to the show. So uh, definitely that. And then Access Hollywood, every night, call at us. There we go, there we go. Um, well, Scott, this has been a pleasure, and I can't wait to see what comes out of what's what's next out of your deal with NBCU. Yeah. And um, it's just, I, I think this the best is yet to come. So um, okay. I'm excited to see what's next. Yeah, man. Thank you, Gibson. Right. I appreciate of it, brother. Course. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Thanks for tuning in to We Should Talk. I hope you enjoyed the interview. You can find out more about In The Know at intheno.com. You can follow me, Gibson John, at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our interviews, past and future, by searching We Should Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Hope to see you next time.